Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is the companion YouTube channel to www.texasflycaster.com where you can go to find highly detailed information about fly fishing in Texas. Hi, and thanks for tuning in to the Thursday Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is February 19th, 2015. And today we've got a hodgepodge of things to talk about. Um, what's going on uh, next week is uh, critical, actually, much more important than what's going on this week. Uh, as usual, the weather's uh, beating us down pretty hard here in North Texas. And if you're in the east and watching this video from somewhere outside of Texas and towards the east, you know you're taking a beat down there with temperatures dropping into the single digits and below zero with wind chills and things like that. So we're kind of lucky here in that we, uh, we're not that cold, but at the same time, uh, we're not that warm either here in North Texas. Um, temperatures are below freezing at night and getting up to around 50, 60 in the day, but next week that's going to change. Um, but let's cut to the chase, really. Uh, if you like to fly fish and you're looking for information on fly fishing, the first thing you might want to do is just click off this video, actually, and go straight to my website, texasflycaster.com, because that site has been ex in existence for... Uh, eight years now and it's a site that's been very successful and it's loaded with information to the point where I may have I don't know a hundred videos on the YouTube channel but I've got over 1300 going on 1400 stories on Texas Flycaster most of those are free to read still um, so you might want to go there and check that out if you do get a decide to go for the membership reading uh, there'll be a lot of information coming as as fishing heats up this spring and it includes hot spots, GPS locations, and things like that for fish uh, wherever I can find them. Next week is the fly fishing show in Houston, Texas. Uh, it's kind of off the radar for fly fishing guys, but it's a fishing show and it's downtown Houston. And I had a guy that's a, a rod maker contact me this week. And it's Marsh Fly, and it's a brand new, to me, it's a brand new startup. Um, of course, you know, I get information as it comes to me, and so sometimes I'm, I'm, this may have been in existence for a long time, but I'm just now finding out about it. Anytime you have information, feel free to send it along because I count on you guys to actually uh, provide me with a significant amount of information on fly fishing, gear, rods, and everything else related to fly fishing. So if you do get a chance to go to the fishing show next week in Houston and I suggest if you're in Houston you, you gotta go check this out just to see what's going on in conventional tackle of course there are fly fishing representatives there and one of them is going to be Steve and his partner Rob and Rob is handling the conventional rod business while Steve is, is really spearheading this marsh fly business I think that uh, uh, you need to check those guys out. They, the way he tells me that they're going to handle their rods and their marketing is unique. And uh, we could have a, uh, a new rod maker here based here in Texas. Um, you know, there's all kinds of ramifications about actually where rods are built, the actual blanks and things like that. But, um, you know, with the EPA doing what they're doing, uh, it makes it even harder to build build things like fly rods here in the US and surfboards and things like that that are also of interest to me but anyway so you're looking for marsh fly booth at the the convention center next week in Houston Texas and when I, while I'm in Houston next week I will uh, we'll probably won't have uh, the fly fishing report because I'll be on the way there or there or whatever so you know next weekend's pretty much going to be a fishing weekend in the Houston area. What I'm hearing in that area of the state is that the sand bass runs are on right now with small sand bass. You know, the males are, are highly active in staging. And so there's water in the creeks there, although it's not as good as it could be in the lakes. Well, I think the lakes are pretty close to capacity in East Texas, but, um, you know, there's not a lot of flow coming out because of the rains into those creeks, which creates that, the, that momentum for the fish to go up the creeks. But they're there. And the males are there right now. So you want to check that out if you're into sand bass and catching them by the hundreds in, in, in Texas creeks and in Texas lakes, especially in East Texas. And what that means is generally we're a few weeks behind to a month behind, so it's coming for us too. 
I'm a lot less interested in creek fishing for these guys uh, because our lakes are so low that the creeks are dry in places like Lake Ray Roberts so and even Louisville Lake which somebody some people call uh, Lake Dallas but anyway uh, we're gonna find some sand bass there and then as that, that migration of temperature and, and activity comes our way we'll find it up here and then as a third point uh, for the, the, the joys and fun of sand bass fishing we're gonna go down to uh, Central Texas and fish some rivers down there sometime in the spring and it should be a really good spring um, even though as you've seen on the water Wednesday the the maps are showing that we've still got a major major drought going on here in Texas and and it doesn't seem to be letting up and you'll see some spots where it's just really just off the charts dry epic is what they should call it but uh, they call it extreme I believe so that's just their interpretation I call it epic anyway if you are um, getting ready to go fishing for sand bass you know what I do is I'll spend some time in these cold days we got some cold days coming in the beginning of next week time flies and one of the flies that I've been really successful with is this fly right here which is a a clouser and that color right there I don't know if you can see that very well because this camera may not focus that close but that's the fly and that's tied on a mustad hook it's a it's a jig hook circle hook and it's it's a deadly combination it always hooks those sand bass just right so you're not having to dig out you know flies from down their throat or whatever it's always hooks them right on the outside lip and it never lets go um, one of the keys to this is using um, new UV fibers UV dyed uh, bucktail and UV dyed um, kip tail so I don't know I, I think I've got to let me see if I can just turn this on real quick and show you what UV looks like I don't know this is an experiment I've never done this in, on video before but let's just try this and see with UV light if these things light up like they do when I look at them with the, the naked eye I don't know it may just blow out the camera who knows <laughs> we're gonna try this and see I uh, if you've got one of these heavy-duty lights by clear cure goo right here these guys right here make sure you take the batteries out of it because for some reason this light drains your batteries and they're very expensive batteries that go into this uh, there's your tip <laughs> the very expensive batteries that you can save if, uh, if you actually now maybe you can see that how it lights up I don't know exactly if you can see that but don't look at that light because that is sunlight basically and that will uh, uh, blind you over time so you know that's uh, that's the downside of clear cure goo is definitely that they use uh, the brightest daylight to activate what is essentially an industrial uh, drying hardener and that's what I use on this I don't I, you know I use wear sunglasses and, and actually uh, use clear cure goo because it dries really fast and it adds a little weight to the head and it adds a, exponentially more life to the fly so these are the flies you know as uh, as you get ready for the spring runs of sand bass you're going to want to tie up a bunch of these guys because you know you could end up fishing in creeks and things like that so so you definitely uh, need a supply of these guys these gray flies I don't know how well they'll work they're not UV um, if you don't have UV uh, dyed uh, components don't worry about it but those are great color combinations there the only combination that's not here yet it's just a white on white so think about that you know there's a lot of aspects of fly fishing and one of them is fly tying some people just choose to tie flies and don't even fly fish very much so this is a very uh, relaxing and, and fun way to uh, spend your time when you can't go outside with the weather so bad here in Texas um, if you have any information I'll be glad to take it in and tell people about it you know one of the great things about talking with uh, the guys at Marsh Fly is that they're into sharing information as much as I am it's very unusual that um, people that are professional guides like they are um, you know come out and actually say this this kind of thing that they're actually into sharing information but it's not magic what we do here I'll be glad to tell you you know what the left hands doing while the right hands doing something else there's no problem all you have to do is ask uh, if you enjoy the videos you see here on the uh, Texas Flycaster YouTube channel, please subscribe. And always, I, as always, I thank my uh, my vendors, uh, the people that endorse me, and I endorse them. It's a, it's a unique situation where um, I pay for the things I get, but I sure enjoy reviewing them, and it's top quality stuff. 
and I would definitely like to uh, get my hands next week on these rods by Marshfly and see what they're up to. For example, I just I just can't stop talking about these guys. But for example, they've got saltwater spay rods coming out. They've got fiberglass saltwater rods coming out, and uh, several other things that are very interesting and kind of like a shot in the arm to the the fly fishing rod industry here in Texas. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. If you got any questions, let me know. I'll be glad to tell you anything you want to know about fly fishing here in Texas. If I know it or if I don't know it, I'll find out and get back to you on it. Have a great weekend and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for watching this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. Thanks also goes out to the sponsors. If you need more information, be sure to visit www.texasflycaster.com. And if you have any information about fly fishing in Texas, feel free to share it and we'll be glad to get it on the report.